Hey, it's Mark Davis with a little Between Talk Shows action for you, a little video bloggery that we engage in between talk shows. First thing I want to make note of, though, huh? You like the new digs? You like the uptown production values? Thanks to Kevin and everybody here at 660 AM The Answer, we're going to do them in here. There was a certain charm to doing them in the studio with the iPhone about this far away from me, but it was kind of hollow and whatever. We'll do some in there every once in a while, but for right now, real cameras, real green screen, real logos. Let's put it to good use. A uh, couple of things that, that I take from the shows that we're doing this week as I stand here on the afternoon of Thursday, September 21st. It's been a weird week for Governor Romney, obviously. You know, you've got the admitted bad day of hidden video of him seeming to conflate the 47% uh, who are sort of on the public dole in some fashion, more receivers than givers, the 47% who are not exactly paying income taxes, the 47% that are certain to vote for Obama. Those are not all necessarily the exact same three groups of people, and his failure to put the nuance on that is not something that you want to have come out, uh, you know, on Meet the Press, or not something you want to have come out uh, in the media. Democrats and Republicans will tell you this. There are things that you will tell the donor class uh, when you're sort of engaging in some broad brush generalizations to get them to write checks. Republicans and Democrats do this. I've been in rooms where this has happened all the time. Uh, the, the exact quotes from those rooms don't always make it out into the general public, though, so fine. Okay, that's not a good week for you. But I'll tell you what is good for you if you're Mitt Romney, is it all sparks a conversation about the 47% and why, in fact, we have 47 freaking percent of everybody uh, who is, uh, is, is not doing well enough to pay a to actually pay income taxes. There is the story, a story of haves and have-nots, a story of food stamps rather than paychecks. This is a conversation Republicans ultimately do want to have, because when we have that conversation, we win. So I think there's a way for Governor Romney to turn this, to pivot this into a positive. All right, let's go to something else. Let's go to the Middle East. Kind of hard to put a positive spin on this. Uh, our embassy's on fire, our ambassador's getting killed. I mean, you know, and, and now that that's a few days old, and there are stories about whether the Obama administration administration uh, explanation of this, the story about, oh, it was totally spontaneous. Well, there's, there's some evidence that, that, that our ambassador there uh, thought that he was pretty well on an Al-Qaeda hit list. Gee, that wouldn't be a big surprise to anybody. So we have that. And then in the continuing days thereafter, uh, I think we have long since, I hope we have long since abolished this crazy notion that all of this is about the uh, the dumb movie that the guy did, uh, Nakula Nakula or whatever his name is. The guy's not any Spielberg, we know that. And we also know that that's just not enough to cause all of this rioting. Is that what's uh, sparking some of it? I'm sure it is. I, I take a look at what's going on in France these last couple of days. Uh, the notion of some more uh, uh, depictions of Muhammad in cartoon form. France has closed down schools and embassies in like a dozen countries because they just know everybody is going to freak out and try to kill people and set fire to stuff because of comic books depicting Muhammad. Now, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't want to sit here and tell you that this makes me want to do a little sketch of my own just to see. I would never hurt anybody intentionally, but it, it, it creates a certain odd fascination, perhaps, in the artistic class because they just want to see. I can, I can, I can understand a certain level of, uh, of curiosity. Well, if I draw the Prophet Muhammad, can I get a thousand people just to light stuff on fire in Tahrir Square? It, it is, there, it, there is a pathological fascination with what the heck is going on with people who react that way. I mean, listen, I'm offended by stuff every day. I don't riot. Is there anything special about me or you? I don't know, and, and, and it may take a million psychologists to figure that out. Let me, uh, let me pivot to my third thing. Speaking of something that it may take some psychologists to figure out, uh, as we stand here today, it's Thursday. Tomorrow, Friday, is iPhone 5 Friday. So I just want to ask you, what is the matter with you? If you are thinking of standing in line for X number of hours to get an iPhone 5 that's going to be the exact same thing if you got it on Saturday or Wednesday of next week, or the 1st of November. It's the same thing. I, I guess I've been a slave to this at times where you just got to be there, the first guy to get the first one. But I don't know, maybe that was when I was in line uh, for, you know, for Genesis tickets in 1978. I mean, but it's, it's, it's a stinking phone. I, and I love the product. I'm an iPhone guy from the word go. My iPhone 4 and Siri and all of that, that's still pretty new to me. But I'm 54 and old and mellowed, and so you know maybe I just don't have the same exact kind of um, 
psychological workings there. But I'll tell you what, if you're watching this and it's still Thursday or if it's Friday morning and it's early and you're in line for one of these things, call me on the Friday show and we'll just sort of, we'll analyze you and we'll have a good time about that. Speaking of the Friday show, our usual gig is 7 to 10 Central Time each weekday morning, Monday through Thursday here on 660 AM The Answer. But on Fridays, haha, -ha, five big hours together. Mm. And it starts with Bill Bennett's Morning in America, 5 to 8. I love that gig. It's such an honor to be in that chair every Friday for Bill, 5 to 8 a.m. and then downstairs to this floor just down the hall behind me here uh, for 8 to 10 locally. So I figure on Friday we'll probably do some American Airlines labor strife. Uh, wh which Cowboys team are we going to see on the field uh, and that schizo squad on Sunday? Will it be the guys who beat the Giants or the guys who choked like dogs in Seattle? That's always an adventure. And in fact, it's always an adventure to share time with you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. And now, hey, thanks for watching here at 660 AM The Answer.com.